In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your very first custom React hook, and it's much easier than you think. Also, if you want to learn React in depth, everything you need to know, make sure to check out my full React course, I'll link down in the description below. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started, I have a very basic React application where we have a single state for our name, and then we have a single input where we can update that name. And as you can see on the right, we can type in our name and it's going to work just fine. But when we refresh the page, this name is going to clear itself out because we're not persisting it anywhere inside of local storage. So what I wanna show you how to do in this video is to create a custom hook, which is going to allow us to store variables inside of local storage, but we can use it just like we would use the normal use state hook. So when you're creating a custom hook, the very first thing that you need to do is to give it some form of name and you want that name to start with use. This is just a convention that React uses for creating custom hooks. And if you start your name with that use prefix, it's going to allow React to do all of these extra linting and error checking rules for you to make sure that your code is going to work as you expect it to. So let's create a brand new file. And we're just gonna call it use local storage because essentially this is going to be just like use state, but it's going to be for using local storage. And in here, you just wanna take and export a normal function. We're gonna export default function called use local storage. And inside of here, we're going to do all of our code for actually persisting our data to local storage. And since I want this hook to work essentially exactly the same as use state, I want it to return the exact same thing as use state. So we want to return our variable as well as our update function. So inside of this hook, what we can do is use other hooks built into React. So what I want to do is just import the use state hook from React. So we can say from React. And now in here, I can set up our basic state. We can say that we want to have a value and a set value. We're going to set that equal to use state, just like that. And then we can return these. So we can return, whoops, value and set value, just like that. And now our return from this use local storage is exactly the same as use state over here. It's going to return a value as well as a function for setting that value. And the main reason that I'm doing this is because it makes it so much easier when we want to use this new local storage hook. We can just essentially come in here and say use local storage, and now it's going to work exactly the same as our current use state does. All we need to do is set up some code for taking in our initial value. So we can say initial value, and then we can just set that initial value here. Essentially, all we've done is take a hook and wrap use state inside of it. So now we have a new custom hook, which uses use state on the inside. Now, obviously, this is not very useful because we're not actually persisting anything yet. So let's create the logic for persisting our data as well as for taking our data out of local storage. So let's first do a function for getting our data. We can just say function get saved value. And this is going to take in a key as well as an initial value. So this key is going to be what we want to store this as in local storage. And we need to get this in from our local storage. So in our example, we can just pass in a name string here. And then inside of our local storage, we're going to save a value with the key of name, and by default, it'll have an empty initial value. So now inside of here, we have that key, and we can use that key to get our saved value. So inside of here, all we need to do is just say local storage dot get item of key, and this is going to get whatever we have stored at that key location. And we just need to convert this to JSON. So we can say JSON dot parse of that information right here, and this is going to be our stored value. We could say saved value is going to be equal to that. And now if we have a saved value, so if we previously were on this page and saved some information, we just wanna return that saved value. Otherwise, we're going to return our initial value down here. But if we want this to work exactly the same as use state, something you'll remember is use state can take not only a value, but it can also take a function as its input. So we need to check to see if this initial value is a function and call it. So we can just say if initial value instance of is a function, then we want to return whatever comes out of initial value when we call it. 
Otherwise, we'll just turn the default initial value. Since we know it's not a function, it's an actual value. And now what we can do is inside this use state, we're going to use the function version. And we're just going to return here only our get saved value with our key and our initial value. And the reason we're using the function version here is because we don't want to always call JSON parse and call local storage every time we render our component because it's pretty slow. So we're only going to do this once the first time our component loads when it needs to get that initial value. So now if we save, you should see nothing really changes. Everything over here works as before. And that's because right now there's nothing in saved value. So it's just going to skip this and return down here our initial value. And we can even check to make sure the function version works by coming in here and passing a function that's going to return an empty string. And if we save, we should still get everything working as before, which is exactly what we want. Let's just move this back to be this version because we don't actually need the function version. And now inside of this use local storage hook, we need to actually write our code for updating and saving our value to local storage. And the easiest way to do that is going to be with use effect. So we can just come down here, create a new use effect. And we want this use effect to save our value inside of local storage. So we can say local storage dot set item. We're going to pass it the key that we want to set it to. And we're going to pass it our value, which is just this value here. And we only want to do this when our value changes. So we can just say whenever our value changes, we're going to run this hook to actually update our value. And we can't just set an actual value. We first need to stringify this because you can only ever pass string values to local storage. So we're going to convert this value to a string no matter what before we save it to local storage. Now, if we save, you'll immediately notice down here, I have our local storage pulled up. And you can see we have a name value with an empty string by default. And as I type in here, you can see that local storage value is being updated as I type. And most importantly, when I refresh our page, you can see our value stays persisted because we're saving it inside of local storage. But the most important and crucial part of this custom hook is this code, you know, it might be a little bit complicated or difficult to read. But the great part is inside of our app here, we just use that hook just like you would use state or use effect. It doesn't really matter how it's implemented. You just need to use it and it's going to work no matter what. And we can use this in any component throughout our entire application and it's just going to work. And the great part is this has the exact same format as our use state hook. The only difference is we have to pass it a key. Other than that, it works exactly the same. Now, before I finish this up, I want to show you how to create another type of custom hook. We're just going to come in here, create a new file, and we're going to say use update logger.js. And what I want this hook to do is I want to, every time a variable changes, I want to log that variable to our console. So we can, of course, export our default function, use update logger, and it's going to take in some form of value. And whenever this value changes, I want to log that to the console. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. We, of course, need to use use effect so we can actually check for these changes. We're going to get that from React. And then all we need to do is just create this use effect. And this use effect is just going to console.log our value whenever our value changes. So instead of here, we'll just paste in our value as our only dependency. We don't need to return anything or do anything with this hook other than this. Now inside of our app, we can use that hook. First, we need to import it though. So use update logger from dot slash use update logger. And then we can just say use update logger with our name value. So every time our name changes, we're going to log it out. So if we go into our console here, clear this out, and we start making changes, you see it's going to log out that every single time we make a change to this input value. And again, just like our other use local storage hook, we can use this use update logger hook anywhere in our application with any value that we want, and it's just going to work. That's the real power of hooks is you can encapsulate logic inside of a custom hook and share that in your components, which is something that was really difficult to do before custom hooks. So that's why I love custom hooks so much. And that's all there is to custom hooks in React. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my full React course, which I'm going to link down in the description below, where you can learn everything you need to know about React. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.